tourism and sustainable tourism, I'll be more precise in that, uh, actually helps save the environment. For a dead rhino, you can get fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars for the horn. For a live rhino during tourism, it's worth around eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars alive. So it's uh, in the best interest of the people to keep the rhino alive. generalizing and there is a lot of disabilities that are not even disabilities uh, in, in that sense uh, only perceived as disabilities so I have seen animals with disabilities and they are resourceful when I was in Brazil I saw a jaguar who is uh, cross-eyed and that that's a, a disability in in that sense and since he doesn't have any uh, depth perception uh, he can't hunt for bigger animals like uh, capybara or crocodiles or uh, tapirs or other animals. But instead, he adapted and went for fishing. So he only catches fish. Another animal with disability that I saw is uh, saiga antelope. Saiga antelopes, they're kind of an antelope living on the southern Russia border with Kazakhstan. And um, they have this big nose and they were look really adorable, but they're they were critically endangered. And I went there to do a project with the University of Moscow, and there I saw an albino uh, saiga. So albino, I don't know if it's considered disability in that sense, but in the animal kingdom, it is. They're more visible and they don't have the camouflage characteristics that the other members of the herd have. So they really stand out. With bears and with orcas, they will help each other. With elephants, I've seen amazing herd of elephants just helping this young uh, elephant baby uh, who was struggling to walk. I don't know what was his problem, but he was struggling to walk, so they helped him walk. Uh, so you, you get these kinds of behaviors. With the jaguar, with the cross-tied jaguar that I mentioned before, he was living with his brother. So his brother would help him catch fish and they would share those fish. So, I mean, you do have that in, 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 uh, in their surrounding. So they do help each other. I've had clients who participated in the workshops that I guided who were with disabilities, either on a wheelchair or uh, crutches or other kinds of disabilities. And those people, I mean, they showed me they taught me that many of the disabilities that I thought that were serious disabilities are only in your mind. And they've, been, they've done things that I could, I mean, they, they went, you know, uh, roping down a cliff. I mean, I've had even people in, in, in Lapland and in Svalbard on snowmobiles uh, who, who were disabled in the sense that they couldn't operate their lower leg but they can still ride a, a snowmobile. And even in Tanzania, we have a special lift going into the car. And in, in Antarctica and in Svalbard, we have a special crane to lower people on the ground from the boat. So there is a lot of solutions out there. Tourism and sustainable tourism, I'll be more precise in that, uh, actually helps save the environment. And even we're seeing it right now because we have I have a lot of contacts in Africa and a lot of the rhinos that were hunted for their horn were transformed into tourism resources. So a lot of uh, tourists come to watch the rhinos and a rhino is worth more alive than dead. So for a dead rhino, you can get fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars $55,000 for the horn. For a live rhino during tourism, it's worth around eighty to $120,000 alive. So it's uh, in the best interest of the people to keep the rhino alive and not kill it. The same with the mountain gorillas. So the mountain gorillas in the Bwindi, in the impenetrable forest in Uganda, uh, they were hunted 
and they were critically endangered. There were less than a thousand mountain gorillas left in the world. And thanks to sustainable tourism and really expensive permits, I mean, the permits is uh, 600 to $750 per person uh, per day. Uh, and you have to hire, you can only hire someone local from, from the community. So their livelihood is based on tourism of people who want to come over and see the mountain gorillas. So each mountain gorilla was worth $10,000 dead and now $80,000 alive. So that's a huge difference. So instead, uh, instead of killing the gorillas, they're now looking after them and making sure that nobody harms their gorillas because if they do, the community is losing money. The same with the uh, Tortuguero in uh, Costa Rica that were hunting, uh, catching and, and selling sea turtles for soup and food. And now they have a lot of tourism based on those sea turtles. So in that sense, tourism is raising the value of animals alive rather than dead. So the community has interest in preserving nature and the habitats and the animals themselves. Now they say that money makes the world go round, the same in this case. If you're starving and a dead rhino can save your life, people will kill the rhino. Sustainable tourism is good for the environment. And there is destructive tourism as well, uh, like the hunters and, and uh, people who go for trophy hunting and, and so on. And there is destructive tourism in the sense of you know people who are ruining uh, beaches and, and resorts, uh, ruining uh, uh, sea coral reefs uh, just to build another resort. So they, these can be also destructive. Uh, so it can be uh, sustainable and it can be destructive. It all depends on how you do it. Mm -hmm.